Gwen, what does in the red mean? Bugger, Dad, broke. That's what it means. You want to watch yourself today now. Have you had that last dinner spaghetti? No, I haven't. Dad? Huh? Have you had the spaghetti? No, I haven't had it, no, but I opened it. Well, what'd you do with it? I buried it in the garden. Why, man? Why, why did Look, you do Couldn't you put the tin back in the bloody fridge for someone else to eat it, man? But I was frightened, man. It was all worms like. All worms in bloody blood. I thought they might come alive and crawl out. Now, look here, Dad. We can do without you wasting food like that. Oh, I'm sorry, Myra, love. Well, you should be, man. <laughs> Gwen? Yes? Found anything in that book yet? No, love, nothing. You've already got a job. I don't know what you're on about. I'm bound to get the bullet sooner or later, and I stands to reason, man. Don't go back to work. They can't sack you, then. <laughs> Very funny, Dad, I. Well, I was only saying. They didn't even give me the automatic annual pay rise. That's how much they think of me. Well, I don't know what we'll do if you lose your job, Gwen. We're only scraping by as a man. There's a final demand for his metal detector. There's a summons from the poll tax. And a red water bill. We shouldn't have to pay that. We don't get red water. <laughs> <laughs> And then there's the HP do on that luxury ferret cage. Not to mention the bloody parasite of a ferret itself. You got a pedigree, see? You got to pay for quality. You got a glass eye, man! <laughs> well, anyway, I don't care if he's a cross between Muffin the Mule and Tarka the Bloody Otter. Strictly speaking, Moira, a mule and an otter couldn't have descendants. See, a mule is already a cross between two different species a, a horse and a donkey, and therefore sterile. Don't patronise me, forest bastard gump! <laughs> Look, I found these in the washing machine. What should I do with them, do you think? Dad? Put them back in the washing machine, man! Now, these bloody Cocoa Pops, man, they're everywhere! How much do you think this have cost us over the weeks? Oh, I don't know, how much? Too much! Oh, free offer they was, see? <laughs> Buy in 40 packets of Cocoa Pops in free, Dad, all right? You don't even like Cocoa Pops, none of us do, well, man! I'm not that averse to them, actually, Moira. I mean, they are packed with 17 essential vitamins and minerals. Well, you can eat the bloody things, then! <laughs> they was for my working model of the Titanic, see? <laughs> working model of the Titanic. Jo model boats, they're for little kids, all right, Dad? Little kids whose minds haven't developed yet. Aye, but I can have one as well. Why? You can have one? Question is, why the hell would you want one in it? You and your pathetic obsession with great commercial shipping disasters. <laughs> I like some, see? I like to see the little plastic people drowning. <laughs> right, that's it. I'm going. You ready, Gwen? Yes, 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 I am. Randy, have you got that list? Yeah, here it is, Mark. Well, come on, then! Sit down. I can't cope with you and the outside world today, man. I wasn't going to come anyhow. i got to listen to the shipping forecast. <laughs> Where is it exactly that we're going to, Moira? Shopping. We're going shopping. Not for quality produce, cos quality produce is off the menu. It's vegetables and crap like that for us from now on. Well, vegetables aren't crap, Moira. These are, but these are. <laughs> <laughs> Kitchen! I assure you, Gwen, turnips are a surprisingly versatile vegetable. You're looking pleased with yourself, Ross. Been playing with your didgeridoo with you? I've been doing some business. Ah, well, I hope you use the tree. I've been in all day, son. <laughs> Good news for the outside world. <laughs> I've been entertaining. Not since I've known you, you haven't. 
I got a secret, son. I know. You're not my real father. I've adopted. Please, please, say that that is true. I've paid for it, dreamt about it. No, oh, son, you are the fruit of my groins. I'm a repulsive image and unnecessarily unkind. Do you want us to try to guess your secret address? Aye, all right then, Randy. OK, um... God said we've been toyed with by an idiot. <laughs> no, Gwyn, such seemingly childish games are an intrinsic part of adult human interaction. They simulate a sort of a primal contact, a, a subliminal search for our Atlantean roots. There's me just thinking he's seen him. Come on, Rumpelstiltskin, out with it, or it's the coal shed for you and the candle. Not the candle, son, please. Look, look what I got by here now, right? There it is. See it? <laughs> what the hell is that? It's my surprise. Vacuum cleaner, is it? No, no, it's not a vacuum cleaner. No, it's a cistern. A complete household cleansing cistern. Did you pay money for this? No, no, no. Well, not much, no. How much? Only seven quid. Only seven quid? Why? What do you mean, only seven quid? And I use my piggy bank money, so don't moan. You haven't got no piggy bank money, love. You used it all on Cocoa Pops. No, 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 no. I borrowed it from the gas money. The gas money? <laughs> more and more, seven pounds seems very reasonable for a piece of technology like this. I, I mean, well, I think Idris has got a good deal, in my opinion. Well, of course I have, man. <laughs> and listen, it don't just pick up dirt neither. It does other things and all. It paints the walls and it sucks up insects and that. It does the washing, man. There's even a bit of a stick in your tea if it gets cold. <laughs> it was invented by Russian scientists. He, he didn't want me to have it, so I had to use my charm. And it's for you, my love, to cheer you up. I felt bad about the Titanic and that, see? Well, at least it'd have got a practical purpose, innit? I mean, it's not like videos, innit? And no. bloody goat's no. cheese, man. <laughs> oh, it's lovely, Dad. Hey, you can't go wrong for seven quid, can you? <sighs> that was bloody close, wasn't it? Aye. Hell of a nice bloke he was, Gwen. He had a tie on. He looked like a chicken. <laughs> Mr. Charisma. He came in and showed me how to work it, see? Said he was sent special. Lovely! Oh, right. <laughs> I thought he was from that Indian restaurant in Paul, so I said to him, now look, I said, I am not paying for no curry with a sheep's nose in it. <laughs> not even a small one. No, no, that's right enough, right enough. But, but he didn't know what I was talking about, see? Yeah. <laughs> so I signed his form and that. Form? <laughs> You signed a form? Aye, only a bit of paper it was, see. Could we have a look at this form, Idris? Aye. Oh, he wasn't keen for me to have it, see. Oh, but I twisted his arm, I did. <laughs> and then he said I could have one because I was past my prime. Gwyn, love. Uh. I'm going to chop some turnips. It was this form. Aye. Well, it's seven pounds, Idris, yeah? Aye, that's right. That's just the deposit. There's another 1,412 pounds owing due to be paid next Monday. Ah, we are ruined. <laughs> our world, our balsa wood world is coming crashing down around our ears. I knew it would see one day. Just didn't think it would be today. <laughs> and you should never have been taught to write your own name. <laughs> But he was a nice bloke, man. Ronald, he was called. He got seven kids, and his wife's a big chapel woman. Hang on. Ronald. Seven kids. Wife, a pillar of organised religion. Looks like a chicken. Character is Ron! Who? Ron Jasper. The most evil man! Oh, well. It'll be all right. It'll be fine. Trouble is, see, I worry too much, I do. Always have done. Even when I was a little girl. I used to worry that my body would grow bigger, but my head would stay the same size. But I never had no money then. I was all right. I just played with my dolls. 
I still can't believe it. I mean, to take advantage of an innocent old guy like Idris, I, I don't understand people like that. Well, he's a salesman, isn't he? Aye. Salesmen are what's left over after normal people have been taken out. <laughs> salesmen and metalwork teachers. And Ron's a one-off even by salesman's standards, and I ought to know I shared an office with him for six months. Well, couldn't you talk to him, then, as an old friend, you know, explain the situation? We worked together, man, Randy. We wasn't friends. Ron hadn't got no friends. No one went to his farewell do. He didn't even go himself. Ron, I remember him now. When he was a teenager, he used to hang about outside the pensioners at selling timeshare in Ibiza. He put in an offer for Mrs. Evans seriously ill's house just eight minutes after she died. Eight minutes before she died, it was, Gwyn. How does the guy sleep at night? Doesn't, but he robes the hills, harassing his sheep. <laughs> to life! How is she, Mr. Price? Not good, love. Not good at all. Only ever seen her like this once before, and that was drug-induced. <laughs> Red in it was 1983. Somebody had spiked a cod liver oil and malt with LSD. Gee, it's all that Ron's fault. You've broken her like a delicate piece of plastic. He used to be a window cleaner, didn't he? Ah, he used to perv in on people like women and that. Mm. Take advantage of them when they were at their weakest, most vulnerable, like. He seduced Mrs. Harris, the farm, on a rebound from a bad crop of cauliflowers. <laughs> Mr. Harris shot himself a few months later. Gee, that must have been a really bad crop. <laughs> The champagne of life spray down on us all like a spring shower, in it. Drip, 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 He has a fling with Jennifer Brooks, no clothes on, so they say, before she died, like. He's an animal, like a tomcat. He's like a milkman with a new coat. What about his wife? Ethel. Well, she's a religious woman, right? Religious and violent. Pentecostal, she is. Right, so, so why does she put up with it? <laughs> well, because she don't know, in it? I mean, he don't go home every night and fill her in on the details of his conquests, do he? Clever. Are you a standards guy? Yes. Oh, thank you, Gwyn. Oh, I am so depressed, man. I wish I'd never seen the bloody thing. I hate it! I wish I'd never answered the door. I'd never answer the sudden thing again, even if I know who's there. I wish I'd never got born. I'd never get born again, I'll refuse. I'll cling to the inside of the tin. Dado! Dado, man, there's no need to be so glum. In there? No, love. Hey, sit here by me now, right? Aye. And we'll pretend Aye. that we are riding on a sleigh. A sleigh? Aye. <laughs> Out in the snow, being driven along by a beautiful lake. This is nice. Ah, oh, it is nice. <laughs> hey, see that reindeer over there, Dad? And them little white open rabbits, see them? Oh, aye, I see them. Look, there's got to be something we can do. Gwyn? What? You could move to a moonlight flit. But maybe it's our home. No, I mean, you, you, can't, you can't do a moonlight flit from your own home, man. I mean, you've got to live somewhere, don't you? We could bribe him. Ah, what with him, are we financially ruined as it is? Unless he's particularly part of the Cocoa Pops, that is. Shucks. <laughs> Not now, Di, but thanks for the offer. <laughs> no, man, I mean, we could bribe him with, you know, Shucks. <laughs> Are you volunteering, Di? Uh, well, no, no. I never thought I'd actually say this, Di, but that's not a bad idea. Isn't it? No, I mean, the question is... Mandy! The Gwyn! Oh, I can't, Mr Price. I'm promised to another. <laughs> no, no, right, right enough, love, right enough. Hey, what about Bridget? She's going through a celebrate phrase, what with Colin being in jail, like. Voyeurism, isn't it? Aye. He stole a camcorder for his birthday and he's never looked back. <laughs> Andy. You are kidding, aren't you? I mean, you never know once. Let's go, is it, Mrs. Price? To Bridget's. We can relax, have something to eat. We could have a tea party. Aye, if you like. Fresh cream, hundreds and thousands, fairy cakes. Red pop. Booze. 
Lovely glitter and bubbly booze. <laughs> Go to Bridget's, we are. Go to Bridget's. Should we go after them? No, no, let them go, but that's the best. You never know what they might do in a state like that. You know. Look, look, I've got a plan. We'll appeal to characterless Ron's better nature. You haven't got one. Well, everyone's got some good in them somewhere, Gwyn. Ron haven't. No, no wolf from gladiators. Well, look, I'll talk to the guy, reach out to him. I mean, it really shouldn't be that difficult. I'll utilize my interpersonal skills. <laughs> Kind Mrs. Price. Bridget will be home soon. She'll be visiting Colin. She'll probably buy some cider, Mrs. Price. We can have some, you know, when she comes. We could watch a video. Now that's nice. Now don't you worry, Mrs. Price. Everything will be all right. Hey, ma'am, there's a hell of a funny smell. Can Bridget, the... Mrs. Price is here. Hello, Mrs. Price. Hello, Bridget, love. I'm cooking us some food, Bridge. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> Would you like that cider now, Mrs. Price? Cider? Why? Don't know what hell of a day I have, I. From the bottle, is it, Mrs. Price? <laughs> I'm going to check on the pizzas. Ah, you better. I won't be long. Depressed, eh, Mrs. Price? No, not really, love. Just a bit mentally shattered. Uh, <laughs> Colin's depressed, like. A bloke in an XL hung himself in a night, so he was kept awake by doctors and that running about. He needs his sleep, see, Colin does. Sensitive boy, love. Ah. It might be Satan, Mrs. Price, huh? the honoured one. You never know. He intervenes in human affairs in very petty ways sometimes. Sure he does, love, I. Do you reckon I should sell my soul, Mrs. Price, to Satan? <laughs> well, it's a decision a person I've got to make for themselves, really, isn't it? I'll commit myself like on no. Oh, You've noticed that they wear a lot of black and that, have you? I had noticed, love, yes. Oh, we'll watch a video then, is it? All right. Any requests? Anything at all, love. Night of the Living Dead. <laughs> I awoke vomiting on blood, too. <laughs> <laughs> Four weddings and a funeral, then, is it? <laughs> Have you seen it, Mrs. Price? A couple of times, love. Man, it's your favourite. Four weddings and a funeral. Great! <laughs> Hang on a minute. Isn't that Mrs. Evans, whose husband left and can't afford to pay her bills? I didn't know Mrs. Evans, whose husband left and can't afford to pay her bills, was in four weddings and a funeral. No, it's Colin, man. It's not. <gasps> No, he's been transferring his videos, isn't he? That's a lane down by the ferret farm, that is. Oh. And who's that, brother? Oh. Oh. Good God! Oh. It's not! It can't be! What the hell is that with? It's sandalwood, Gwyn. It facilitates clear thought and understanding. Oh, it facilitates bloody sinus trouble and all, I know that. <laughs> hey, I've done it, son. I've done it, Randy. Oh, well done, Idris. And what's that? It sounds like a half a dozen slow punches amplified. It's the song of the dolphin, Gwyn. The song of the dolphin? Hey, I, I thought the song of the dolphin went. They call him Flipper, Flipper, <laughs> faster than lightning. No, I Gwen, know that's I'm... a television program theme song. <laughs> dolphins transmit messages via ultrasonic frequencies. They actually talk to one another. What do dolphins talk about? Water. <laughs> that's all dolphins would talk about. They say, look, there's water. <laughs> Ooh, there's more water. <laughs> I well, it's going to take more than burning bits of wood and talking fish to get Ron to communicate like a human being. You mark my words. I disagree, Gwen. All we've got to do is create the right atmosphere for a powwow. You are as mad as a Ghanaian fisherman. <laughs> Ron may have finally met his match. Oh, there he is. He's yet to the door, Gwen. Can't, can't you act with a little more self a little panache or something like that? Get to the door, man. He might push off and get removed out. I'll get him. Yes. What are we going to do? What we have to do to have to slip something into his tea and smash it. Ah, we will. Hi, I'm Randy. Join the club. 
character list wrong. Snide, big mouth Gwyn. You two uh, know each other. Oh, we're old friends, aren't we, Gwyn? Yes, in a manner of speaking. And I, I believe you've met Idris. Ah, the heir of the household, the patriarch. What? Don't you call me a bloody <laughs> one? <laughs> now, Rana, have a seat, please. Thank you. <clears throat> He's doing it much. Hey, uh, Rudolph Valentino isn't turning up, is he? Uh, Ron, get down here, please. <sighs> isn't Gwyn gonna perch on a cushion, then? I am a nihilist, Ron. I do not believe in cushions. Pity. So, what's all this about, then? Well, the thing is, Ron, we wanted to talk to you now because there appears to have been a misunderstanding. Let me guess. The old gentleman had no idea when he signed the agreement that the uh, Suckett Mark II was so enormously, almost unbelievably expensive. He would never have bought it if he had known. And now he wants me to tear up the contract and forget all about it. Oh, I can even keep the seven quid deposit for my trouble. Right? <laughs> oh, that's great. How did you know? It's a tale I've heard often before in the past, mainly from uh, concerned family members such as yourselves. <laughs> That's great, Ron. Now, you see, I was trying to explain to Gwyn that I believe we all have a central core to our being that is essentially benign. Mm, and then that I we... hear what you're saying. I can see the enormous financial burden this debt will place upon you. Well, yeah, I'm glad you can oh, see that. Oh, yes. The anguish it will cause, the possible breakdown in marital relations, even, perhaps. Yeah, you know, Moira's already going mm. a little funny. Oh, I can visualize the, the misery, the unhappiness, the despair. This dear old gentleman's casual stupidity will cause you all during the days, weeks, months, and years to come. Well, yeah, that's it. And I rejoice! <laughs> yes, I rejoice! Because I don't give a damn about you, or him, or you, Gwyn Price, or you, a spaced-out wife. As far as I'm concerned, you can all rot in hell. So much for your interpersonal skills, then, but... I did think, uh, when I first arrived here, that a certain, um, Sexual bribery might be in the office. What? Well, you know, the ambience, innit? The aroma. Not dissimilar to several establishments I frequented on the Goa Peninsula whilst travelling on business. Yeah, you, Ron, you are... You... There's not words in the English language to describe you, Ron. In Croat or Japanese or something, maybe. I huh? hope we have a word which roughly translated means you a dog flea wouldn't land on. Ah, did I? Good for the Hopi. That's you, in it, Ron. Shunned even by your fellow parasites. <laughs> Tell me, Ron. Ron, did you know when you came here that this was my house? Did you? Of course I did, Gwyn. Yes. I haven't forgotten, you see, the way you treated me. Oh. The way you used to flick dead flies into my tea when I was trying to work. <laughs> the way you called me characterless Ron and made little plasticine models of me with grotesquely distorted genitals and put them on people's desks. <laughs> How you hurt me, lowered me, degraded me. You're oversensitive, man, Ron. <laughs> Did you ever once have pity on me? Did you ever say, hey, listen, Ron, I know life is hell, but I am here with you to help you fight the darkness. No. No, you just laugh behind my back in the canteen. No, not even behind my back. I wasn't important enough for that. To my face, you laughed. Well, laugh now, Price. <laughs> laugh now. <laughs> well, I've ruined us. I'll never be in Rob Batty book again. <laughs> I'll have to have a cheap imitation instead. I'm sure you can still have Batty Burg, Idris, just maybe not so much. I slice it, Senator. Hey, I stick that What are you doing? I'm wrong, 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 i he have been delivered into our arms, oh, left. Hush and watch. Hi, <laughs> What's this, eh? <laughs> Dirty bastard, Ron. Not bad at all for amateur work, I've got to say. <laughs> His face is crossed, look. He looks like a monster from Space, man. <laughs> monster from Bumbles, more like. <laughs> oh, good film, wasn't it? Idris? Oh, the action was good, man. But no shame of your own, Jasper. Well, if you've got it, flaunt it and it love. <laughs> right then, we flaunt it, is it? I will show it to die at the Cosmo Club, have a public viewing like that. <laughs> we can have the soundtrack played late at night on Radio Ronda. <laughs> Jasper! 
Jasper. Jasper, ah, oh, here it is. Uh, let's be reasonable about this now, Quinn, shall we? I, I tell you what, all that stuff I said just now, I didn't mean it. It's your mother there, love. Uh, all right, all right, you win. Right, uh, here we are. Ron Jasper knows when he's beaten. Oh, yes, there we are. Satisfied? Is she? No, no, I, I'll wait. You're not satisfied, are you? Why not? Hey, what more do you want? You want me to beg? I'll beg. Oh, you want me to go on my knees? Right, I'm nearly in. There we are. I'm on my knees. Please don't do it. Please. Oh, please, please, please don't do it. Is she left? No, no, I'll wait. Look, you don't understand. None of this is my fault. I'm a dysfunctional personality. You don't stay. Yes, I do. I'm weak, you see. I was tormented as a child. My mother used to make me sleep standing up. Oh, <laughs> please for you, Ron. My sister used to dress me up like a clown. My dad electrocuted himself, changing a fuse. <laughs> I, 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 I had to wear his charred clothing to go to school. Mrs. Jasper? Oh, what more do you want? What more? You want me to wiggle on the ground like a snake? <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm wiggling on the like a snake. Please, please, please. <laughs> Congratulations, Mrs. Jasper. You're one of God's chosen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Well, I oh, reckon you. you have to be more punished, Mrs. Price. A good spanking. Yeah, or, or an enforced period of self reflection. No, I know. Send him down the boar's head at 10 o'clock on a Friday night to ask for a carafe of dry white wine. <laughs> Yeah. Make him eat the vacuum cleaner, man. <laughs> no. I got it. Come with me, Ron Jasper. Come with me. Where we going? Pronography. So that was <laughs> pronography. But what does it mean, though? Well, you know, explicit sex. Oh, it's rubbish, man. Rubbish, that is. Me and Angara never did that. Well, you must have done it once. Why must we? <laughs> well, in order to have had Gwen. No, no, son, you don't understand, man. Listen, I let you into a secret, but you mustn't tell no one. Right, swear now. I swear. I mean, I believe the ability to retain a confidence is a vital part of dualistic human interaction. You what? Well, I won't tell anyone. Right then. Ang Arad got in the family way by accident. You mean Gwyn wasn't planned? Well, someone might have planned him, but we didn't. <laughs> no, son. She got that way by going to a public toilet in Porth Call. <laughs> the seat, see, son? She sat on a dirty seat. <laughs> Idris. Huh? I promise I won't tell anyone. Oh, <laughs> goodbye, Randy. Good night, old buddy. I doubt the light is it, son. <laughs> yeah. Good night, son. Good night. Good night, Ron. <laughs> hey, Ron. You missed a bit, but top left hand corner. <laughs>